finally back at Makassar after a couple of weeks fishing the Um Yeah, you know, we're mainly going to be targeting carp today, or they'll be later on this afternoon only. Uh, at the moment, so I'm going to start with a bit of a white muscle bait and maybe just scratch around, maybe for Khalyun or uh, maybe a nice white stump nose. Uh, the water is still a bit clean, so we're going to wait for, for the tide just to drop a bit more. Normally, when the tide starts dropping, you, you get the sandbanks start working with better, and also the sun sits very high, so it's really, really bright at the moment. And cobbies, they do like a bit of a, like a dirtier water, which we don't have at the moment. So, but I'm sure we're going to get a fish today. I really, I'm really hoping so. So, just for the time being, I'm going to start with a, like a normal scratching trace. Nice and simple. The one of adrenaline, really, uh, this hook really uh, works for me. Huh? Then I've got a, a 0 0.60 maxima. Got a small power swivel there, and then a little clippy there with a 100 pound leader, braid leader. I was going to use a 0 0.4, 0 0.4 to like slightly thinner diameter sinker line, but shorter as well, so I don't get stuck. And then I was going to go with normal uh, white mussel. Uh, this time of the season, the white mussel, because you still have cobra, well, you've got cobra on as well, you've got, you have Kholyun, you've got the uh, oh, black tail, all that stuff. They all will bite on white mussel, so it's a bit of a best of both at this stage. So uh, after this rod goes in, I'm going to do a nice uh, big chocker bait, chocker and oculate bait, let lie for a while. So yeah, I just want to show you guys quickly what we're looking at the water-wise. So um, yeah, as you can see, it's, it's a bit clean. Right at the back, you'll see like darker brown patches of water. Here in the front, you have a nice rolling bank. Now this little rolling bank will be here the whole time, and that's what's really keeping this area alive, especially to clean the water. So there's a bit of sand on the on the left pop, uh, on the right popping up the whole time here. Nice little gutter and a shallow sandbank. So it's, it's looking looking really fishy. So uh, yeah, I was gonna get this bait in the water and then yeah, I'm gonna show you fishing. So. All right. So just uh, just quickly, I do like using the uh, the nylon grab sinkers. So. It's really flexible, so especially in a day where the water is very, uh, it's quiet, it's calm. I like fishing this between a bit of rocks as well because it doesn't stuck as often and you can wash around a bit and it'll grab again. So I do like the sink if there's not really a lot of wash. And uh, it calls really well. So yeah, I'm going to give it a go today and see what happens with that. So, uh, yeah, well, <laughs> while we're waiting for the white muscle to defrost, it's still a big aisle. It's gonna do a bit of a, I've got some brine prawn. So, it's normal sand prawn. I think you guys call it cracker, a right? cracker shrimp that side. So, what I normally do, you pop a load of them, and then at home, you prepare, uh, take boiling water, a lot of salt in there, keep stirring it until all the salt dissolves, and add a bit more. Let it cool down and then try and freeze the water. Okay, so it's gonna create like a, a frozen brine. So you take the live prawns, dunk it in there, and it's still perfect to use as well. So you don't waste your prawns. And they do work. Alright, so like a strong, like a long streamlined bait. Yeah. Okay, it's cake. for khalis in that and you're not sure if the holes are open so with the first cast you're not trying to feel and especially with braid you can feel there's rocks in the water you don't want to fish on the open sand uh, you want to have a bit of rock in the water you know it's a bit of structure and uh, i can feel the rocks so yeah i'm going to set the rod down and get the other rod in the water I was going to show you quickly. This will be the spotty bait for next week, so I'm just going to keep the head. 
I won't throw it today. It's a really, really nice bait there, so I'll keep that in the bait box. Now again, I know it's been shown a lot, but that's the wings of a squid. Bring it in there, rip it out like that. I was a bit worried about this one. This one was defrosted once. It actually still looked very good. It smells perfect, nice and sweet. So yeah, I'm gonna use this one. Uh, the wings you can also keep and use like as a base for your bait. But I'll show you guys that a bit later on. A lot of people throw those away, but you can definitely use this as a wraparound, like a base, especially when you bash it in nice and nice and good. You know. The price of chocolate these days, you can't really afford to, <laughs> to miss, uh, to waste anything, huh? Okay, so in the end, this will be bashed and wrapped around the, the dingle. It's a nice little soft dingle with a good clip, big clip. There'll be just an extra little tassel, so I'll just show you how to put this together. So we're starting with just uh, taking the chokka tassel <laughs> and just uh, yeah, tying it up nice and firmly. This will basically be the base as well for the bait. If there's a lot of pickers around, this tail will probably be eaten off in any case. But yeah, it helps. If you can get a bite quickly, this does help to give a bit of movement in the bait. can take your time, you know, if you want to make a pretty bait, the basics <laughs> stays the same, but just be effective. And the main thing must be the hook must be proud and uh, the bait must be secured properly. I like to just hook it on there. So that's the base for the bait. So you just turn it around the foam like that. You tie that one on separately as well. Every layer that you do, you tie it off. So if, if for some reason this one gets charred off by the small fish, you have another tied on layer below that, you know, so it doesn't, you don't waste bait in time. I'm not going to start with a too big a bait, but just to get a line in the water. That'll be a bait, nice and simple. The circle looks on there. The clip is still nice and exposed, it's soft, so it will still be pliable if the, if the cop takes it. They don't really, especially these size copies we've been getting here, like the three, five, six kilo fish, they don't like a hard dingle dangle, you know, a hard bait carrier. So, yeah, just keep it nice and soft, and that's it. We're gonna get in the water. I'm going to put on a piece of white muscle now. Um, you see the water is a bit clean uh, and a bit cold, so yeah. With the white muscle, you get the tongue, okay, and then you get the, the, the guts, okay, the datum bit. So, a lot of people throw this away. That's the most important part of the bait. Um, most times when the fish isn't really biting, you'll get one or two taps and then nothing else. And this will come out and that will be gone. So don't throw this away, that's your main bait. All right. Also, when using the size bait on the circle look, obviously the circle look needs to be proud. Now, I've been doing this for the last two years already. Um, I know everyone says you have to snell a circle look. Uh, the size one O's and two O's, I, I don't snell them. I do normal, a normal clinch knot. Um, and I don't really miss a fish, so it does work. Now, keep in mind, say for example, a, a Khalyun or a bronze bream, the mouth is this big, all right? Now I have a hook that's this big, it really fills the, the gap of the, of the mouth. You know, so you don't need that, that of an angle. 
where with a cob for example if you're going to be throwing for a for a cob even like a, a five kilo fish okay so that's an 8 0 final wire circle even the five kilo fish is about this big see how small that hook is in relation to the to the fish's mouth all right so there you need as much angle to really set the hook but with a with a, a small no, with a, a small circle hook you don't really need that another big reason why i'm doing this is if you want to use worm baits with the snow it's a bit of an issue to rig them up and to just push them up the line yeah it's straightforward and probably the, the one of the most important things for me with a snow you have an angle like that okay now what often what happens often especially in turbulent water while fishing for halyun you get that and the tangle and then you you get that and then you get a fish on or you have a pull and you miss the fish and you wind up and you say ah okay so i i really i don't like that so just by doing that a normal clinch knot for your size one o's and two o's it eliminates that mess completely all right so yeah keep it in mind try it it does work uh, really there's no difference in the success rate now to get back to the white muscle the tongue the guts just try to shrink it as per normal one two three push it over the shank and then there where the guts is just make sure the hook comes out there and now the most important part is when you use your bait cotton to form the bait all right with a bait cotton, you, you have to basically force the fish to feed on the softer areas, especially in the volume. Uh, so, the, the section above the, the eye of the hook, you want to really tie that up nice and tightly. So, he's going to go obviously for the fleshier part there. So I was going to do this first. Start on the eye. So that's been secured. And now you go down here. Make sure you get proud. And then what I like to do is one, two, three. Take it all back. And then tie it on properly there. Alright. So when you cast, that's not going to move down and clog the hook point. Okay, especially for scratching angling, for, for scratch fishing. That's very important because the way they'll feed, you don't want to have the thing clogged up and miss the fish. So now that's soft. You have three, four wraps around there. It's enough just to hold it together. And normally when he goes onto that uh, circle loop, it's fast. Tie it off once like that. So, that's a normal little scratching white muscle bait. Looks nice and neat, effective, and cast easy as well. Okay. okay now with this, with this cast, you can see the, the white rolling water there. It's about a 100 meter cast. Yeah. So it's going to put it just... Okay, just take the wave in the back. You'll see it's going to crumble and start now. They will start running, breaking, that's when we're going to put the bait on. Get them in the clear the, the, clear the water. <laughs> yes, Beautiful colors, huh? Now, have a look at the circle, look. that's what I spoke to you about. You don't really miss the fish, it's still perfect. And that is with the still with the um, normal clinch knot, that's perfect. Like three bumps, and it was fast. Okay, so something to keep in consideration. So obviously the fresher the better, so if you don't have fresh, then this will do. <laughs> it's got to do. See with this, especially in this clean the water, you might even pick up a bellman or a small steamy or... Uh, Alright, so 
So, uh, yeah, we've been fishing for about two hours now. So I did a one stump and a couple of, a couple of takes. The, the wind, we had a bit of a, well, yesterday and the day before was a big south yesterday. That's what you want for Falls Bay. And then for the last hour or two, we had like a south, south south westerly, which, you know, so it cleaned up the water a lot. Uh, we'll show you guys now. It's like really clean and a bit chilly. So I only hope now is to scratch around, maybe find a khali for you guys and uh, maybe another a coffee or something but on the scratching rod and then as, as it's going to start getting darker then um, yeah the water clarity is not really going to uh, affect the fish so we're going to be hoping for a cop then so it's now half past what half past four i say half past five half past six we should be like in the golden hour so now yeah, we're going to see if we can get to another honey or something and yeah see you guys now runs in there, if the consistent puffs of sand, try and get your bait into the sand puffs because it's, it's some form of cover and obviously whatever's there will be dislodged. Um, also if you can find like a, a rolling bank, every single set does have white water, uh, work that bank a bit. I mean otherwise it's, it is tough when the, uh, when the water's clean. But like I said, if the sun starts setting then everything starts looking better already. So. Uh, yeah, another hour or two and then yeah, it should be interesting, huh? Let's keep fishing. <laughs> it was a very hard day so far. We got a small stumpy. Cut is about 34, 34 centimeters. Look at that. White muscle. Yeah, so the white muscle definitely works the key in the water. Okay, I'm gonna circle looking. What I said earlier. With a normal knot in the corner of the mouth, no assholes, no tangles. Good. Found a little spot with a couple of khalis still. It's very late in the season, Working score for the cop. Boy, eh? Look at the colors on it. Stunning. Uh, and you know, they're in the area, just wiggling the rod every now and then. It does, it does something. They definitely come back. I 
nice to think for me is all these little blue friends at the bottom there. I can just show you, you don't need to have like expensive hooks, I mean that's a little adrenaline circle hook and it works. So yeah, well one hour, about 33 centimeter fish. So uh, frustrating day, uh, I think we wanted to clean up a lot and uh, in the end, you know, if we didn't have our scratching setups, uh, we probably wouldn't have any fish, so managed I think three khalis, black tail and, uh, and a white stump, which isn't too bad considering the water conditions, so yeah, it just shows you, scratching is always a, a time and a place for scratch fishing, so just keep it busy at least while you're waiting for the bigger rods to, uh, to dip, so yeah, uh, we'll probably come out tomorrow again to see what happens, so yeah, stay tuned.